And we're back in the Crash Labs today as a war room. We've got Matt Wilson joining remotely from the beautiful Vancouver, CJ Kim, Where's Josh Duggan. Uh, as per quarterly, we've got financials that just hit the wire. Um, it was a tough quarter. Tough year. It's, it's a tough year. It's a tough. It's a tough time in the market. Like anybody. Well, do you want to just sort of take us through some of the highlights of it, or? Well, high overview. We're down a little bit on uh, everything, but I think that's just the product of the markets. And I think Matt has done a great job with the portfolio. Um, you know, we were forced to be more uh, stock pickers in, in, in the current environment. And, yep. you know, we've uh, weathered the storm so far so good. And obviously, um, our revenues are a byproduct of byproduct of what companies can actually spend and if they're not raising any money and Samson behind uh, the camera right now that put out a pretty compelling graph in that for the entire year we still in in aggregate the Canadian stock exchange in terms of mining finances basically equate to one month in what year 2022 2020 anyways it's yeah, we they're not raising any money right now, and no one's uh, investing in these markets right now. But I guess the uh, silver lining is we put together another graph in that, you know, December. If there's any sort of rebound, it's it's the it's the month to do it. But you know, there's a lot of rebound that we need to do to get to where we want to be. You know, the the trouble is, is it's like in a market like this one, it's about how big of a loser are you, and we're not, we're the, the least of the big yeah. losers. We're like the least loser. You know, Franco at the top of April, when April was 160, whatever, $170, 117 right now. It's like a pretty big drop. I think that like, it's important to, to keep some perspective on, on these markets. But if you ask, yeah. probably if you ask Franco's those guys, a big loser. I, yeah. I, I just, <laughs> I just think that it's the biggest, you know, the traditional J curve on junior stuff. I know we've talked about this before and it's like heartbreaking. You know, it's like beating a dead horse here, but like, a J curve goes down first. So even if you're investing in venture, no matter what, even the bull market, usually you have this downswing first, right? Especially in public markets because you have flow through sellers and you know, you have like crap happens where things go down initially before they kind of go up, right? I mean, like you, the exploration in general is a great example, right? Like everyone gets really bored and then all of a sudden they're like, wow, how did this, how did I miss this? There's this huge hole, right? Like, um, and I think this market is, is, is truthfully, like this is a fun market to, to work in. Like, I know that sometimes it sucks and some of our big positions are getting, are getting hit as much as our little ones were, but like, um, you know, you, you find, you find really interesting opportunities out there because no one has capital. So, so people call you, right? Like there's not, there's not a lot of competition, uh, in the, in the, on the street right now, right. Cause no one has any money. So, um, there's some, some really great stuff out there that you just would not see. Yeah, that's so, true. The trap line, uh, the trap line lights up a little bit extra. Uh, when you when you're one of the few pockets of capital sort of floating around in the in the ether, um, what do you find, Matt? Did you notice anything in particular across the names? Like, was it copper, base metal, gold? Like, was there an extra hit on any of the aforementioned or lithiums or anything like that? Like, was there was there a sort of like an outsized impact that we noticed? I mean, despite like, I mean one of the conflating issues we have is that we do have sizable positions in certain names and they're, they're very, they're very big. So a small change in those can eclipse, you know, rather big swings in smaller names. But are you seeing something like that? Any patterns like that on the, on the portfolio? Yeah, I'd say that, well, discovery is still rewarded. I think that like, you can take a look at the, you know, like congratulations to Chris and Hercules guys. And you know, like if you hit a, if you have a discovery, that's obviously a really big deal, but like you have a discovery, so people still care. Um, regardless of metal, I think, I mean, we own this, uh, the titanium company listed in London, um, which is a 40 kilometer long titanium discovery. It's like the biggest titanium find in the whole world. Yep. Um, and it's up 150% in four weeks since we played. So, um, and that's titanium like, that makes paint white. So, uh, <laughs> so I mean, like, I think that it, it, it is, the, the market does reward discovery if it's of size, right? These small things that, that you know, and are, are hard, but I would say if you looked at a macro theme, lithium got killed, especially like the hard rock area plays. Those got really smoked. Um, we had a couple of those left over in our portfolio that were pretty liquid from 
from prior times, right? So one of the things we're dealing with still is recycling the portfolio, right? Like turning it from previous names into new names. Yep. So that obviously that obviously hits us, especially in the liquid down market, right? So that let's not. Um, I think that's a big thing. We're still we're still working through just the last little bits of it. Yeah, the legacy names we call them. Yeah. So there's some lithium in there, right? Because there's a lot of stuff, and, and you know, like truthfully, on the on the side of our business prior, like we did a really good job on airborne surveys of using hyperspectral to identify new pegmatites, right? So when we were doing work for these guys, it was real work. It's just we had a lot of stock. Um, yeah. And that, that stock got killed, right? And so there was an interesting article out there I shot through to you guys yesterday where, you know, the guys at BHP and Glencore, like we will never touch lithium because there's way too much of it. Um, and then Rio is, is into lithium, right? So it's kind of like a, it's hard to know if hard rock is like a lot of hard rock's gonna matter but it does affect all of our, like we, we own a big position still in NOAL, um, which they should have well going through right now on their, on their kind of like uh, outside of the Brian thing. And that, that thing is an awesome discovery and it got smoked. It's down, it's down 50% from its high, but that, that happens. Right. And so you just got to kind of weather the markets a little bit. Gold got trounced. Mm -hmm. Gold's, like gold's gold, got to the bath. Gold got trounced. Like anything in gold, I think they may be the exception is our position in Southern Cross and so Mawson, right? Like that thing, but that shows you that company is still worth 150 million Canadian and drilled 330 meters of seven grams of gold. So I, it's beyond me. Like we own a bunch of this thing, both Southern Cross and of Mawson, and it's been a great performer, but it's, that should be way higher, right? Like in yeah. a good gold market, that thing is, a, is, is way higher, it's newfound way higher, right? You know what I mean? Like these things, these got hit for sure are golds, but, um, Interestingly, though, on the private side, like we had some good successes of gold companies that, you know, like the Dryden guys, like they raised some good money in at a higher price. So Yeah, that cool. really came together nicely. I mean, yeah. we had Trey come in here, did the pod. Um, they were actively out there uh, financing, and I wasn't sure how they were going to do because, as you mentioned earlier, like the oh, markets are so beat up. It's so... Uh, there's not a lot of capital floating around um, kind of sentiment was at an all time low, notwithstanding the whole cyclical um, nature of the November existence in the space. I think Samson to CJ's point put out a really nice chart um, that showed that of all the months, and I think we're going to talk about it a bit next week, but of all the months out there, November out of like of the last like 18 years, November 17 years of those is the all time worst performing month by a long shot, you know? Um, and then I think December oddly enough was the, was the pop month. That was the up, uh, the, the, that was the uptick. Um, so then that's sort of conflating what's on top of an already bearish trend in the space for like the last year. Yeah. And you have to worry also because you have higher rates and you have bigger debt debt in your individual accounts, right? So even your high net worth people who are paying higher mortgage rates, so they're paying whatever, because most, most wealthier people, I would think, play variable rates more. I think they're playing credit lines, they're not playing like fixed mortgages only. And so you've got higher rates, higher payments, a little bit less risk appetite. And so your tax loss selling might be a little bit higher because you want to offset some more things. So um, who knows what's going to end up happening here? It's, it's an odd, it's an odd market right now, because you have this like macro environment swirling yeah. around a weird metals environment, right? Like nickel, like nickel's like $7 or seven, like nickel has gotten killed and copper came down really from us. So the metals market is like really consolidating along with this market. Even randomly gold is above 2000 and it's doing really well and the gold market still sucks. But um, yeah, it's, 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 it's an odd time, but again, like, so, so trend is more juniors, tough space. But again, like people are raising, like you stick with teams Well, look, like, like, like back to that, that whole Dryden issue. Um, given all those circumstances, one would expect the Dryden goes live on trying to finance and they come up with donuts, five. you know, yeah. and they, they blew way past it. Yeah. They're five, right? They're yeah. Five million. Our, our position's up 50%, which is nice. And we, we have you can get that royalty on the, on the property too, which is terrific. Um, and some big players thing. took big pieces of that. Right? And it's an exciting project. That's an exciting, exciting piece, right? That's, yeah. That's fun. So. No, I mean, I, I, it kind of it kind of makes me think of like th this conversation I had with Dave Lotan um, back when, and I just loved having Dave on the show. I hope we can get him back soon. But um, you know, we were talking about it, and Dave was sort of saying that markets like these, to your point, can be kind of fun. Like you were mentioning earlier, that you sort of enjoy this time, 
And Dave was sort of saying, well, if you know how to pick them and you pick them right, now can be a really good time. Like the the real winners, the real good deals, like we've seen it with Hercules, we've seen it with, you know, uh, a variety of names like Southern Cross, et cetera. They can do quite well. Um, so picking it right in these markets, the the real winners, you know, the PMETs, the whatever, they, they still do well despite, you know, yeah. a lack of capital swirling around in the space. Discovery always matters, right? And I think that, yeah. I think that you know, we, there were a couple big things that are, we're, but we're not really worried about our, the, you know, the only drag, like a couple, couple of drags in the portfolio are bigger names in the gold space, obviously, the it's a hard space, right? But like, we're not worried yeah. about it. Um, and we're not worried about the fact that, you know, we had to recycle some positions. So you had a position in an iron company, for, in the company completely liquid, that was 20 cents a share, we have like 5 million shares of it, now it's 3 cents a share. You could never have sold it regardless, right? So on our books, you've got, you know, that's the, the, it's a hit. the liquid names, right? So so that takes a big knock on your performance. But I think that like when we look at it kind of, it's hard to remove those things, right? Because sometimes they, they are fine. But but when you look at it, it's just that that's the nature. But that will get back up in a good market. So you don't don't panic with that stuff. And I think that ties into the real benefit of the, the model we have, which is no redemptions. The public model that we have here is just, it's, it's, it's just, it's such a fortunate thing to be part of because you, you don't have to worry about people taking their money out. And I understand that it's frustrating the stock, you know, like everything like that, but like as a, a the fund itself, like we can position ourselves for three to five year cycles. Right. And I mean, you're, you're good. And I was at this lunch on Wednesday, last Wednesday, the, the for the Vicuña district. Right. So we've got Adam Lundin and Voitech, the CEO of NGX and the Philo guys there. And uh, Voitech was a tech for a long time. And Neil O'Brien, who was the SVP of Lundin was giving the talk and, these guys are talking, they're just like, this reminds me a lot of 2003, like the cycle, like the consolidation, like, this mm. is, like things are getting ready here. And every, and those, you know, there was 150 people in the room. NGX is above its last issue, even though copper is down by half. Right. So I think that like, you're like, people are, people who, are, who have a little bit of patience are, are, are good here. And I think that we are in that position and we're making our portfolio pretty exciting. So, um, and one of our private names happens to be our silver bullet on the Vicuña district. So it sure, it sure is that that's a, that my head is down really hard on that one right now. <laughs> yeah. That is, that, is, that is taking a lot of my time. It's, it's great though, right? Like to be positioned, you know, we have a private position with a giant land package in the Vicuña district. There's like, there's not a lot of them. And we own also Sendero shout out at the top of the Vicuña. Like that's, that is a big, Denny, as you like to say, a big crack in the earth. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and Neil's big thing is it's just like the Athabasca, right? Where it's like, look, like if you're on the trend, you're good. Like you're, it matters, right? I mean, there's some geological things. It's like, a but, big, important belt. And there's a, a lot of belt. discoveries. There's a lot of like billion dollar discoveries along that entire th story. Yeah. And just having a piece of that real estate um, right. with copper, with exposures, et cetera. I mean, what more could you ask for, right? So it's cool. It's probably the best best copper real estate in the entire world. Right? That'll be an interesting it IPO is. or RTO or go public event when it happens. Cause I think it's going to certainly sell a lot of tickets. Yeah. Should be, should hopefully is, hopefully it's coming up at some point. So what, what would you say your main <laughs> takeaway from that talk was Matt on a, on a higher level? Or was it more on company levels there? There's a couple things. I yeah. think that the main takeaway I've been, I mean, I work with Neil pretty closely, right? Because mm -hmm. with, with Sterling, I work with Neil and he drills into my head the same thing Denny that you drilled into my head as soon as I met you 12 years ago, right? Which is like, go for a big system. Yeah. Big systems. It's like, if you're going to find, if you're going to go at something, go big. And that was honestly the big talk. The big yeah. point of the talk was like, big mineral systems lead to big metal systems, which lead to big metal districts. And it's like, if you're going to invest in juniors, find big metal systems, because those are the ones that return. The reason Hercules is such a big deal is because it's like, one hole it's mm -hmm. like this giant area that no one's ever touched before right and it's like not just one hole it's so much bigger than that so i think the takeaway was to find stuff like that you, you need to really think big and that that means that you can fail big too but like that's the reward ngx was 40 cents in 2009 mm -hmm. yeah right like next gen was then you went to, when you went to site in 2015 well, was next was like 70 cents right like, yeah I, well i went even that, i right? think before that but yeah um no next gen was I, I think the first time I saw an X-Gen was probably 2014. Yeah, it takes time, right? And and it and it was nothing. I remember the first program, right? Yeah. And I remember, and like, like, let's talk about that one because that's interesting and I think people can learn something. So at that time, Fission, so Dev had Fission. Fission was a hot topic. Fission was front of mind for a lot of people. 
Fission basically was, um, so if you think about the Athabasca Basin, you want to think about this like m massive meteor impact crater, like a, a, just imagine a massive crater in the earth. And, and then it's filled with sand, right? And then that sand eventually lithifies like dinosaur bones or, you know, uh, and it turns into sandstone, right? For time, temperature, pressure, all these sorts of things. And so you get, you've got this basically big bowl full of sandstone. <clears throat> and then um, because it was an impact crater, you get uh, all of all of these cracks. Like imagine hitting a, 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 win a windshield with a stone. You get all these sort of like spiderweb cracks underneath it, all around it. It's a 3D thing, right? So a 3D bowl with 3D cracks, right? All the way around in the spiderwebs. And so um, the history of the Athabasca Basin is actually pretty simple. Most of the big uranium deposits that you would see, Arriva Mining or Cameco or Denison, any of the big guys uh, in the Athabasca Basin, were are mining uh, basically pooled up, uh, pooled up uh, uranium mit rich material uh, at the at the contact between um, the uh, the 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 crater, the bowl, and the sandstones, and into the sandstones, and there's like you know at the bottom there. Uh, you get all this kind of settling out. You get all this concentration of uranium. And that's the classic example. Now, over time, what's happened is a lot of these deposits were spatially associated with the cracks. And so you'd have these cracks that are, you know, faults that basically um, undergirded this sandstone style mineralization. So people started thinking, well, you know, maybe these cracks themselves are interesting and maybe you don't have to be in the sandstone. Maybe we can actually chase these cracks outside of the bowl. So um, one of the interesting things about fission is that fission was one of these cracks. So when the, where the bowl comes to surface, like so where you have, you know, you're on surface and you're like on the edge of the crater, they had a crack coming out of that, you know, side of the thing. And, and that crack was prolifically mineralized with high grade uranium. And so fission's discovery was basically in that crack and they had, you know, close to surface, high grade, narrow, albeit, because it was like, imagine the faults being filled with goodies, um, material. And it was, you know, a big story. I don't remember the market cap. I think it was a billion. It was close to a billion. It had gone up. It was somewhere between a few hundred million and a billion. Well, because it was half of it, right? Because Hathor was the other side. Do you remember? It was Hathor and Vision. Yep. And so it was like split. It was like, it was like one find that was split in half. And together, I think they were a billion dollars. Right. And then, so then you had that and then suddenly you've got next gen. So next gen and alpha and some of these other companies in there were, were actually in the basin now. So they're actually in the sandstone where, where the, you know, this underground, this bowl is, is extending underground and they're, and they're online with that fault, with that crack. And they're going, okay, so if you drill through the sandstone at some level underneath, you're either going to get mineralization in the sandstone or you're going to come right through into the basement rocks and you're going to get into that, you know, outside of that bowl and into that crack. And then that's going to be a good, a good time down there. And so logically that makes perfect sense. It's right next door. It's right on trend, but yet, um, everybody counted them out, you know, whether it was dev and fission and there was a lot of activism against, you know, well, it's just a closeology play. They're never going to hit anything. Yada, yada, yada. Well, they couldn't have been more wrong. In fact, uh, uh, next gen's discoveries have eclipsed what Fission and Hawthorne combined pretty much have found, and uh, it, it, you know, and yeah, it's they got to go through some stand zone to get down there, but ultimately it's there and it's super rich, and this is more competitive, I think, than than most of what we've seen historically in the basin. I mean, it's up there with the best deposits the basin's ever produced. Next gen at seventy dollar uranium has a five and a half billion dollar NPV, like a real a real feasibility NPV. That's five and a half billion dollars, and that's only ten years of mine life. And you know that they have like fifty years of mine life. What only did ten years? Like what is it when you convert it back to gold? Do you remember what that math is? We we did it once for fun, just to see. It's like, so high. It's like ridiculous. It's, it's like ridiculous. Well, ounces. Like ISOs, yeah, yeah, ISOs like ounces. Deposit, which, Shout out to Phil, an early guest for us, right? ISO energy is what, 400,000 tons at 50% uranium. <laughs> so that's, that's like the most ridiculous. I don't even know. I don't even know what that would be. It's so high. It's so ridiculous. Now, granted, yeah. it comes with its own problems. You've got, 
you got to freeze that. You got to freeze that ground you before you mine it. Yeah. Kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to mine it with robots. You got to freeze yeah. the ground first. But this is yeah. all stuff they do. This yeah. is stuff that happens up yeah. there, which is odd. For sure. Um, so, anyway, so that's super exciting. Yeah. But Siege, I think back to your like big take, which just like, you know, sometimes you can get caught up in area plays, and I think that, you know, let's let's say James Bay, that was the lithium, the rush. You know what I mean? Like it's it's the area play is not a bad thing if you're in that big crack. Mm -hmm. Like if you found one of these really unique systems in the world, like the Athabasca, right? Like the stuff in Siberia, like the stuff in South Africa, like you know, like this not very very common. If you're in one of these cracks, even Kirkland or Timmins, right? Like if you're on. Like those yeah. those those cracks that's that's the most gold isn't that the most gold in the world well it's certainly a very high concentration it's up there, right? it's, up there. it's it's a certainly yeah. a, a very high concentration i mean you're looking in the in the in the universe of like archean systems the you know, the most gold in the world would be wits yeah okay i meant as a as a, that's that's the the trend yeah well in Cur the, the wits water strand in south uh, africa um but if 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 you're looking at orogenic gold um, it, Wits is odd because it's a paleoplaster, so I don't want to really group it in there. Yeah. But if we're looking at orogenic gold deposits mm -hmm. and, and regions of the world, yes, it's certainly it's certainly it's, right up there, right? it's up yeah. there. So I think if you like, so if you was like, what's what's the take is like this is like finding something like that, but it's the beginning. Yeah. Right, and so that's what was cool. That well, was I, my biggest take with it, man. I came out really pumped that we own that we're in that district. It's I was jacked it's very cool <laughs> it, 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 and if you were to look at like any like 20 or 30 kilometer stretch of let's say the main break or or the or sorry the cadillac larder uh break to be specific and or um the uh the dester porcupine <laughs> you know you'd be hard pressed to take a 50 kilometer stretch of any uh, of that anywhere you know throw a dart <clears throat> and a 50 kilometer stretch you're going to have a multitude of deposits of of value yeah, you might not have the best thing on the fault. You might on, on the on the no, but you'll have something structure there. But there's something there, right? And I mean, like I think that the, the NGX stuff, where they drilled whatever was 75 meters of seven and a half percent copper, like in that was 50 grams gold over an interval. It was 20 meters of 10 percent copper. Like there was a whole bunch of gold in there that people don't realize in silver. And so it's like this is a big giant system with a lot of metal in it. And I mean, like Philo is they just killed it. It's like the largest silver project in the world too. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool. That's that is one big area. It's, yeah. it's fun. So that would be my takeaway. Is there anything new in the portfolio you can talk about? Yeah, well, I guess uh, the, again, this titanium thing is pretty cool. Um, really, this Empire Metals. It's listed in London. I think that that speaks to this the way the deal flow goes these days. I mean, like it's a it's not a venture listed thing. It's it's. Uh, it's uh, again, it's 40 kilometers, a 40 kilometer by eight kilometer mag anomaly in West Australia. And, uh, and uh, it is uh, basically the same mineralogy as like the mineral sands that you get out of China. One of those stories, titanium, critical metal controlled by China, whatever. Um, it has all of these uses in steel, but it's too expensive. It's too hard to get. So everyone's identified it as a critical metal because it could replace all those things. But right now it basically makes paint white. <laughs> so it's controlled, you know, like, like literally, like, it's like, okay, you could make like a space arm or paint white. So it's like for pigmentation. Um, <laughs> like it's, it's some of the most ridiculous, you're like, yeah. okay, cool. Or like it's a scalpel so blade. There's just not enough like good deposits in the world. Like Rio has these really hard rock things. Anything with uh, magnetite in this refractory can't get the titanium out. So this is a sediment hosted giant blob of titanium. Um, and there's copper everywhere at surface too. And so this is just this huge metal system. Um, and, uh, that's new. We put put a little bit into that. Um, Neil is chairman. Um, and he's like, this is the biggest mineral system. He's like, it's just, it's huge. Um, there was targeting seven of copper. They found seven of titanium to start. Yeah. Um, that's, that's up 150% since we played it. And that was a fun one. Um, that's that's a cool new one. I think that it's not new in our portfolio, but definitely worth talking about. The Perseverance guys, that was pretty exciting. You guys know them pretty well. The old Balmoral team sold to Wallbridge. They just they got this nickel thing and they've been really grinding, pushing ahead. That really, really smart guys, really intelligent team. Um, 
they oh. just brought they just brought in the strategic and tech is now in there right yeah. so oh we should talk about uh, our big uh, five million dollar investment in afghanistan in the helium deposit oh I'm just kidding. We didn't do that. <laughs> we didn't make it. <laughs> CJ's like, like what? what? <laughs> Sounded no, interesting. We didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our Venezuelan copper deal. No. <laughs> um, no, I mean there's 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 a lot of interesting stuff. There's a lot of there, there's a lot of cool stuff. I, I agree. We we I like investing in the big ideas. I mean, but big there's ideas. certainly jockey bets that can be made along the way, like people that are good. Raise money, like good, good, good people. Like we did, yeah. we did a good job so far on the foundation metals guys. Like this thing down in um, Suriname that yeah. just closed. That was an eighty cent deal. It's like a dollar thirty already. Um, that's a, that's a very cool system. Um, that's a new one. Um, you know, we've we've uh, we chatted about Borealis in the past. I think so. We talked about that. I don't think we did, but we should. Also, Borealis is a new one. That's a big one. Um, that's our good friend Kelly Malcolm who's running yep. that. It's gotten co-investment from a lot of different big funds that are just closing a second tranche right now it should become public in january and he's gonna have a big board too can we talk about that or no yeah sure yeah no it's it's out there the deck is floating around so this this company is a junior company they bought this old mine uh in nevada which has a great history to it we will have a video coming out on it i think at some point as well um but the chairman of this is tony mccooch on the board is greg gibson rick patricio christina mccarthy and kelly it's a pretty stacked junior company board uh, and the reason it matters is because it's got 30 million of replacement infrastructure in nevada it's a permitted mine with probably 300,000 ounces of oxide that they can throw through right now for i think a capex of about two million dollars and i'm not exaggerating like and it's pouring gold down dollars. they're pouring gold now kind of on care and maintenance from the stuff yeah. that's already been there but if they just do a little bit of mining work it's like two three million dollars of contract mining and it gets going um you're talking like 10, $20 million of cash flow a year for five, six years. And there's these oxide targets everywhere. So you can look up on the, like, it's like red stained hills and you can see them from drone footage or satellites. And so there's lots of other targets. They had an oxide pit there, 500,000 ounces. That was five grams in oxide. You know, what's interesting with that though, is I think all that shit is a red herring. And I think like the, the sulfide stuff below. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, man. It's a, it's an expiration project. <laughs> Um, there's some unbelievable potential on that project. It's like, it's like your classic case of a myopic view at the inventory dances and the mining profile sitting on a district scale property with all of these targets. And then at depth in the sulfide, the grades go bonkers and the widths are huge. And it's like, and, and they've got, it's an expiration project. Mm -hmm. I almost don't care about seven, the production profile or anything. 70 meters of seven grams, 150 meters of five grams dish. I think that's what Yeah, like really, really big thing. There's some gross um, stuff in there. The sulfide ore is going to be refractory, but it's okay. You're in Nevada. Who cares? Yeah, there's right? an auto really matter. Matter. Um, But man, it is it is a very cool project. We're probably, I think we're the biggest shareholder. I think we're the biggest shareholder. Biggest institutional shareholder for sure. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's a, it's a really exciting one. I think it should be public in January. I think that's the target right now. Um, Kelly's doing a great job telling the story, putting it together. Um, really great board and good shareholders. Like good It'll be a very, very, for all of those capital markets, people that like tight structures, we can go over the debate on this. I've heard all yeah. we want. We talk about this all the time, but the structure on this is going to, I think the float's going to be like 10%. So, um, lots of lockups for founders for three years. Like it's, it's going to be really exciting. And I think that, Hopefully that that's a nice uh, a nice one. They're drilling, I think, right now. Um, I'm so excited for that. I think it's going to be exciting on the drill bit. I think it's going to be exciting with the board and the rollout and the RTO IPO, yeah. whatever path it takes. Um, I'm sure I should know that. I don't know. I, is it an RTO? It's an RTO, right? Yeah, it's an RTO. It's a yeah. really cheap shell. It's like a million dollar yeah. shell. Um, right, right. RTO. It should be up there. I think they'll probably have like they raised eight eight the first round, and now they're doing two or three. I think. Um, so they should come out the come out the doors with, with enough cash to kind of get going there. It, it's, you know, I hate small mining to fund exploration. It's a terrible idea. If you have to build the mine, yeah. you don't actually have to build this mine. It's there. It's working right now. And Andreas who did, who, who worked in operations at detour and then did all the feasibility work for, for Cote, um, or a lot of, a lot of feasibility work for Cote. He is awesome. Their COO. He's the, he's legit. It's going to be um, nice and splashy. I think the whole thing's going to be splashy. It's going to be. Yeah. And it's getting a nice exciting. gold push right now, right? Like a 2000 gold. It's, it's pretty good. Right. So, um, 
that one's really fun. I like that one a lot. Um, we still hold, you know, we still pushing with our mega uranium. That's that's good because we own. That's why I brought the, the feasibility for Cote. Is that a good? Well, thing? he didn't. He didn't exactly. He didn't like tell I am gold that this oh, is okay. going to be a good thing. <laughs> it's like he worked on it, <laughs> <laughs> and it was a hard a problem second. to work on. <laughs> yeah. <Uh-oh. Okay. laughs> you can start a credit union, or you can buy a shitty low grade mine in Canada at a five percent discount rate. Thank you very much. Three billion dollars, zero point one percent IRR. <laughs> 0.1% IRR, <laughs> fucking light your money on fire. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Why is yeah. I am gold still public? Three. Why isn't it? Why Three isn't it a gold? I, it should be at an absolute <laughs> zero right now. It's like the sensitivity, ta- sensitivity table is like, uh, like seven more rows this side, and it goes to like five thousand dollar gold, zero percent, and <laughs> they're losing yeah. so many people too. Like they're, it's like the turnip truck is losing many, many turnips. Mm. Yeah. Like That's I'm not, seeing you know, some like, really quality people fl- flying out of. Do you think someone gold. buys them? Well, for sure. I mean, at some yeah. point, someone. It depends. Like, can you get the? Can you get it across the finish line? Can Can you get it there and then actually start making money? Because obviously, once it's built, it will make money. There's right? like value that, there. That, that corridor of three gram gold that you start mining in the middle. Like I remember when when Trelawney was ripping. Like there's this high grade corridor in the middle that people will very much like. It's just that everything else is like. At least as I remember, like 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6 grams. So you need you need a lot of rock to be moved and it needs to be built. So if someone gets to buy that out of like if someone pulls a, a Joostra for West Red Lake and they're like, well, someone spent a billion dollars here already, so I'm just gonna take this for no bad like three billion is what's gonna have to be spent. <laughs> so it's like, like, like spent three billion here. I'm gonna buy it for twenty million for twenty million dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and get Earth Labs to invest. Um the, there. Yeah, right. The um the the interesting play for me for them is I would just I wouldn't give two shits about any of that. I mean, I, I guess they're too far along, right? Yeah. But at some point if they could pull a shoot. And if it, it would be possible, I would totally pull a shoot, and I would just pivot to rolling up um, the. I would roll up Shibugamu. So if you've spent Someone's two billion dollars, yeah. and it's one more billion dollars, right? Well, you have to. So well, you got to think like, okay, well then it's like the original feasibility study. Yeah. <laughs> right. So now we're dealing with an actual capex of one billion. What's the? You know what I mean? Like you think yeah, about yeah. it that way. Like okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it probably does look really good at two thousand dollars gold. If you have a billion dollars left, you're like, okay, well, I have, I literally have to do it now because this yeah. is silly if I don't. Yeah. That's a fair point. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, it's interesting to see. I mean, I think they're in a real position where they could roll up something like Shibugamu and have a competitive angle, um, and a real. There's a real plethora of deposits up in that area that together would make an awfully compelling blend of high grade, low grade, and everything in between. Is it Northern Superior scale. doing that already? Simon. Well, they're all kind of trying, right? You've got the Northern Superior Group in there. You've got... Uh, you need capital, though, the, right? Like, for yeah. it to work, like, you need to be able to build a mine that's like a million and a half ounces and two grams. Medita, Porcupine, and, and Nighthawk? Like, they're doing a 4,000-kilometer roll-up. Oh, <laughs> strategic. <laughs> Manita, Porcupine, Nighthawk. Yeah, baby. Did that merge? This morning. This morning. Or announced yeah. this, yeah. yeah, big time. You didn't they're see doing, it? Oh, they're doing a yeah. Canada wide roll, roll of <laughs> 4,000 miles, a fucking haul. No, they're <laughs> like, there's zero. I mean, it's just a leverage play now, I guess. That's all that would be the angle. Wow, that's I, I'm pretty sure there's something. I don't know. I, I just need a dollar. Dollar. there's nothing more to it. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> Yeah, wow. it's just like I was. That. I was throwing shade earlier in the podcast. I thought I could be a little bit more diplomatic about some. I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, do two wrongs make it right? I mean, the roll up, the roll up idea is not a bad idea, right? It's like, not it's a bad idea. Cost, yeah. You cut costs. You have two companies, one management team. Like you have two two assets. You'll you'll probably spin it out again at some point, right? Like you're like, okay, mm. we're gonna put these together. I don't I don't really understand. Is there? I don't know if there's common shareholders. Like the only reason I would understand that is if there was common shareholders mm. and they're like, let's just put this together. North, n- well, Northfield's Northfield's desk is pretty deep into the whole like Cudney's camp Nighthawk, is deep into sure. Nighthawk. That's them, and and as far as Manita goes, I don't know how deep in, into that story they are. But that was recapped as well, right? Uh, Manita's weird. New, new man. management team and everything. Manita's weird. Yeah. Manita had a legit roll up opportunity there. 
you have like Finlon, you have like Monita, you have, you, there's a whole basket of assets in that close proximity. Uh, I think even the high, is it high gold? No. Who are you guys that did uh, Onyx? Onyx is in the Yukon, right? Yeah. Oh, you mean the stuff that they have in, in, uh, in, in uh, Kirkland? Yes. Uh, what's in in the Timmins. High, the whole high grade thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like that whole district. So that area plus, um, yeah, the old like uh, Croesus mine, right? Croesus. And all that kind of area. So there, there's that. There's, there's Monita. Like that would have made sense to kind of group up. Yeah. And have a, as a competitive thing. Um, We're in that Onyx deal. That was, they did a really good job. They didn't hit it enough. That sucks way off. Yeah. It's good to acknowledge things that also don't work. They did a really good job. Darwin's a good guy. They, um, it was a punt, you know? It, it was a well, well-educated punt. A lot of really good anomalies. So that's the, such a hard thing, right? They they came out with news, and it's like, I don't know what they released, 100 and something of 0.1 or 0.15. It's, or, it's nothing. You know? I Zero. Don't know. It sucks. But... Um, but, uh, you know, the, the hard thing is, is that what you probably learn from that and you probably are able to drill something better. And that is going to, it's just, it's tough, man. Like those guys are just smart guys. They, they did a really good job up there. I know a lot of smart, uh, like funds were in that deal too. Yeah. I mean, the, the investment deal. thesis was pretty clear. I mean, you've got Snowline, you've got them, you've got $5 or something. Snow like line. fireweed. Like it's an interesting area, right? Yeah. And then you have these two massive targets you had like the the king tut i think was one of them and then the other one was like a satellite to that and they were like yeah. kind of pretty loud and in your face it's a big, it's a targets. System. yeah and so it was kind of a binary thing it's like well if you find it it's going to be Huge. your your location's great you know your your their anomaly was actually better like the surface anomaly was actually better than the stuff that snowline had right you know, that, that was that was why the cat guys really loved it um, yeah, yeah no us too and right, that's why we like we're like, yeah, okay. I remember meeting with with uh, with them, and we were just like, yeah, all right. Yeah, the market sense. cap was right. It we're was in. worth a punt. It was <laughs> like, you know, let's go. That's like, you know, we're in. Yeah, for a, yeah. you know, I don't think we we didn't bet the farm on it, but we you know we put a small check oh. in there. And uh, so, yeah, sometimes you hit these things, sometimes you don't. That's the nature of the beast. Yeah, and it's you know again good teams that can raise money, and you know they have this thing in Kirkland that is that is also really interesting. I know that. Yeah, very interesting. Explored all that stuff, but. Yeah, it's, it's exploration so interesting, right? Like you can't can't really as long as people do what they say they're gonna do, that's all you can ask for, right? Like it's not gonna you can't force what is it? Can't force the metal to be, the metal to be there, right? As long as you have a good theory, it's like right. I liked the safety net that Kirk and Lake offered it. Kirk and Lake Timmons. I liked initially. I liked the safety net that that portfolio of projects offered that story as a whole as almost a backstop on the investment. Yeah, like, like that's the, the silver lining, the and and the, and the and the team was great. Yeah. Yeah, that's the but, uh, silver lining of it. Yeah. So let's see Sorry. if they can make something happen in Timmins. For sure. What else is going on? What else is happening? Um, we're looking to close our uh, small little tuck-in transaction in the Northern Miner Group. Small oh. little tuck-in on the Friday. Most known, the most known <laughs> mining publication. Becoming the, the, world. the world's largest <laughs> uh, mining media conglomerate. Yeah, yeah. Well, small tuck-in. Super exciting. <laughs> so that's happening on Friday. I'm not sure when this podcast is going to come out, but, you know, once that's closed, we're going to have Anthony on the show and we can talk a lot more about it. Yep. But right now we're still, uh, we're working our way. Yeah. Working our way there. We're that's there. That's great. Congrats guys. Yeah. Lots of different ideas too. Low hanging fruit ideas yeah. that we can, that we can do to sort of bundle things up, get our revenue going, um, Perhaps, you know, a kind of a base level CEO.ca plus subscription uh, bundle that gives, an, you know, maybe an all access pass to these platforms, et cetera, in conjunction with some new deliverables from the CEO side. So that's all exciting. Yeah. Um, what else are we looking at? But you were right. Remember when we made the announcement, we're like, what's our stock price going to do? It's even Steven. Since the announcement, we just have to deliver at this point. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. even you look at like this. This quarter, our revenues are down. Marginally. Right? Marginally, yeah. but still down. Uh, no, I'm not, like, disappointed yeah, no, with no, the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, it just is what it is. And I just don't think, I think we're at a place in our story arc where it doesn't matter. We can say all the yeah. things and we can bring all these beautiful pieces together and everybody sees value in CEO and Northern Miner and all these things, right? But it's just about execution, you know, or our trading 
you know, it's like, okay, great. You guys, you know, really know how to pick them. Like, when are we going to see your portfolio outperforming everybody else? And, you know, in a way we are, it's just, we're we less are. of a loser than they are. Yeah. Right. We've at, outperf- yeah, at some point, absolute returns do matter. I get that for sure. Yeah. Right? It's like, yeah. at some point you're like, well, it's, you're still down. I don't care if everything else is down. You're down. Yeah. yeah. We're not down as much as everything else. It's so what? You're still down, you know? Yeah. Like, okay. good yeah. luck uh, shining through with that. But again, you know, we're 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 working on it. It's it's all it's Rome wasn't built in a day, and and all of our pieces are falling into place. So it should be exciting. Yeah, and I still and uh, we we spoke about this. I don't think anyone still knows what we are or what we do. We're uh we're a new kind of company, and we just have to keep on telling our story and showing how. This new company, this new um, institution, will be the the beacon in our sector moving forward. But it's it's a new concept, and and a lot of people poo poo the idea of a new concept. But that's why you know it's it's hard to execute on new ideas, right? Well, again, people like comps. Yeah, you know, gold spot. Well, I think you got to pull it out, right? So the, the hard part is the conglomerate discount that companies get, right? So it's like, what's yeah. this worth? What's, we, we are really, I don't even know what we're valued on at this point. Um, truthfully, like we have royalties that might be worth our market cap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like literally might be worth our market cap. The, the exact number. Um, definitely worth more than our EV. You should account for the cash, right? Um, you know, I understand you get a discount in equities, 70% usually on, on a NAV basis. Like that's fine. CEO, Northern Miner, right? Digi, mining.com, zero. I don't know. It's it's, it's it's like a lot. It's a lot of it's a lot of things together. What'd you say that? What would you say that is like the GE of venture mining? Yeah, you know, we're making toasters and lunch and washing machines. Well, I think there's more syner- more uh, synergies across our different divisions. <laughs> no, we got a Frankenstein. Yeah. You know, we we, yeah. we 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 ripped we ripped our favorite page out of our favorite books mm-hmm. and glued them together cool. to make our own book. And back in the day, like look at remember how UFC started? UFC was like was like the boxer versus the sumo wrestler. <laughs> yeah. The uh the the, the head and it like, was that guy the Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy. That's that's I remember Gracie. him. Yeah, yeah, the Gracies, yeah. So, three, so, whatever yeah. his name was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so Royce Gracie with like the Brazilian <laughs> jiu-jitsu versus like yeah. the uh the street fighter yeah. and all this shit. And then eventually what is it now? It's like if you're going to be a champion in the UFC, you got to have some yeah. of all these skills. Exactly. You got to be a rounded athlete. You got to have yeah. all this shit. In, in, all, you mean, your arse- most slice wouldn't work this time? <laughs> yeah, no, your no, arsenal no. needs to be rounded, right? Mm-hmm. And so in the same ways, I sort of see this market in some way like that. You're like a royalties company versus a mining company versus an exploration company versus a prospect generator. Like you have to be typecast into these stratum that are really unidimensional. And I get that. There's logic to that. It's like you want to have focus and you want investors to know what they're buying. And so there's there's logic to doing that. But realistically, what's wrong with GE? What's wrong with making toasters and fucking washing machines and pencil sharpeners? Like like th- they were th- th- they were making turbines and toasters. Like some of the most sophisticated stuff on planet Earth and whatever. So they're a beautifully diverse business. And that's not all that GE does, obviously. Mm-hmm. But at one point they were, you know, that was that was the pinnacle of 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 business. Right. And see, there, I, I do think there were a lot of synergies in that because you get to command the supply chain. So like in, yeah. in pulling the metaphor, right? Like if you're commanding the supply chain and price set, right? So for every supplier for them, they're like, we're GE. So give us a low price. And if you can have enough arms of your business that are relevant to a certain market i do think that you can be price setters right so it's like we we have lots of these different arms and so you see people come in because of ceo you see them coming because of mining you see them coming because of the capital mm-hmm. you see them coming because of the royalty business they come in because of the people right so yeah that, i would say that you know maybe it's a bit of a stretch but i think we're that we're not like, there yet yeah <laughs> but that's that's kind of the Working that frankenstein right. approach is really it's like dominating a, a certain path and i think that that you know that that's the goal we all talk about it. We're like, yeah, that's where we're going. Um, but we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the shame of it is, is a complicated story to tell. That's all. You know, you can tell the, we can, we can sit here and have an hour presentation on our royalty strategy. We could sit here, and have an hour presentation on our media strategy or investing strategy. 
um, you know, our, our recurring revenue licensing strategies, um, our digital platform, digital geo, like that whole thing. That's a rabbit hole resource quantum mental. We can dig that up, Absolutely. dust it off and have an hour chat about that. Yeah. Um, there's a million different kind of facets to all this. And it's about, about trying to harness the strengths of all of them, bring them together and make a competitive business that I think we're going to be the only multidisciplinary fighter in the, in the, in the ring. Man, I'm getting into Digi now. It's awesome. It's great. The data side of it is just awesome. It reminds me so much of the Intiara days. Yeah. And that was sold for Siege, what, 30, 35 million Intiara? 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. And that was when this sort of thing, this is so much more yeah. understood now, I think. I think that, that the monetization of it all, I think that... Well, they were doing 12 a year in revenue. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they were doing 12, yeah. 12 a year in revenue and licensing. So that so. had zero value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, cool. That's a big number, you know. And uh yeah, I mean, I think once you dive into Digi and the data, the the strength of Digi right now is all the data and the data feeds and the fact that it's all there. The crappy thing about Digi is the user interface and the way it looks and the way it handles, and we've got to give some thought to crafting that kind of user experience that will make everybody excited about it. And but that's not the I hate to say that's not the hard part. No. That's the easy part. Yeah. That's the cherry on top. That's the icing on the cake. Hard part's the data. The hard part's the data and everything that they've been working on. So they're doing they're doing a fantastic job. It's just an incredible repository of information. Yeah, it's great. It's definitely something if you're if you're interested in mining, it's something you should probably you'll probably come across in the next little bit because it definitely matters that the capabilities you have there just and I'm using S and P, right? Like I'm using Capital IQ and going through it and it's just it's, it's better. not quite the same. It's just better. As yeah. a database, it's better. Yeah. So uh, do we want to talk about, before we leave, um, the cyclical trade, November, Christmas is coming up. What if there's people listening saying, hey, I want to take a punt on uh, junior mining names. Um, November, everything's been sold off. Yeah. How would you do it? I, well, I would definitely look at their capital raising this year. Um. I would probably look to see if there was flow through raised. That would be something for sure. If it was, especially if it was recent, I'd see if anything was just but coming off free trading, that'd be the, probably the, I'd work backwards to see okay. if there was still stock to come out because if, if there's a big tax loss selling that still comes in December, right? Cause people go there like, Oh shit. You know, that, that happens. Yeah. I actually find my favorite week. To, one of my favorite weeks of trading the year is the week right after Christmas. So you get like three days. Yep. There's always something in there. That you're like, oh my God, someone something happens and then you can just buy it and it, it usually doubles into January um, if you have a big enough, big enough uh, net. But I would probably be more wary than I'd be excited at, like first. I, you know, you'd look and say, okay, but it, but there's a lot of names out there um, that are down like 90% and have a resource of something with grade. That would probably be a place to start. I'd probably buy something that's tangible at this point. We are. Um, so projects with more meat on their bones. A little in bit more situ. developed. Like I'd probably stay away. Like, you know, we, we got we got stuck this year in a couple of things very, very early stage, right? Like the, yeah. Um, I'm running one of them, right? So it's like that it's 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 hard in this market. Um as, but it's more relative, right? Because it's like you can find things with a resource that have big potential that you already know have kind of a backstop to value. So I would probably jump in there for the December trade, right? Like and pay money. attention to those that are that that play will be somewhat clouded by potentially free trading flow through shares coming back into the market. Yeah. Right. So just make sure. So it's like, go, go find something that is down a lot because there are things that are really crushed. Yeah. Probably there's something that has hit something already or has a resource base. You see the market, you know, is rewarding something like the Abbot TV, what Abbot TV exploration or something. They just bought this copper thing from Socom. Um, Stock jumped forty million dollar mark cap, seven million tons of of two and a half percent copper equivalent or something. So, um, there's also and, like and a huge promotion wagon behind that deal. Well, there's right? a huge promotion <laughs> wagon behind the deal. I'm still kind of wrapping my head around it, um, but I think that like it has something to talk about, though, mm -hmm. right? Like regardless of the deal they're doing or like there's a resource and people want something like that. So, um, like I like you know, there's a story Archer that's that's uh, that's six million tons of percent and a half nickel. Um, it's old, old, old Balmoral assets, right? And so, like, that mm -hmm. it went from 70 cents, they raised $10 million. They dividended it out 
30% of their stock to Wallbridge. And Wallbridge dividended out that stock to all of their shareholders. And every single shareholder in Wallbridge sold the crap out of it. And it now is eight cents. Mm. And they just raised money. They're smart guys. And so that has six, and it's probably 10, right? And so 10 million times a percent and a half nickel at, for a $6 million market cap, I was like, I'm in. Like that, Matters. not because it's going to, not because it could be like a hundred million tons. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. It's a 27 kilometer trend. It's cool. But the project gives backstop to value, right? So like those bounce names, I was, I was into that. I was like, that, that's cool. Um, and so they just closed $2 million. I think that it's like, that's the kind of name I play, like something a little bit safer, a little bit more downside protection. That's just gotten absolutely smoked. How would you play it? We've played it before, CJ. Yeah. We YOLO like out of the, <laughs> <laughs> out of the money Barrett calls. <laughs> we buy now and we sell out of the money like a PDAC yeah, yeah, Barrett yeah, calls yeah. Nice. at PDAC. It always calls. spikes, and we always get shaken out a month before of it. <laughs> That's awesome. Or yeah. do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or don't do that. Yeah. Don't do us. Yeah, you, you know what? You, th there's a lot of ways to play it. it. It's it's not a bad time to stab in. I mean, again, we're not licensed to be giving anybody investing yeah. advice at all. So let me just lay that down. <laughs> yeah. This is tell. not investing advice. It's oh, just yeah. ideas of disclaimer? ways. Yeah. Disclaimer, yeah. we're not telling you what to do. Unless it's out of the money Barrett calls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, all, we, all we're saying is different ways that people tend to play this. And, yeah. you know, do your own research and figure it out if it's for you. But, okay, now that that's out of the way. Um, yeah, I mean, you can look at 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 short term call options on the GDX, the GDXJ, more torque on the J. That's a crowded space. Uh, you know, you can probably play this the the seasonality pop there, but the reality is, I think to Matt's point, I think just looking around for select deals to play yep. is is is. One that I think people do with a little bit higher degree of success, if you can, if you can navigate that space. Um, and then lastly, if you want to play like CJ, Danny, YOLO, <laughs> crazy stuff where <laughs> Mucho Dinero has been made and lost, it's um, on like call options as opposed to looking at the entire index or basket. You like look at individual large cap names yeah. and you go down the value chain a little bit. You know, maybe not Barrick, but maybe like an, you know, or Agnico. Maybe like you go to like a Ken Ross or something like that. And you, uh, you look, yeah, well, you kind of got to look at a few yeah. of them, you know, and you see where that, you know, who's got the sort of cheapest sort yeah. of. I, I am gold in itself as an optionality play. That is a call option. That is a call yeah, option. You don't have yeah. to buy a call option on I, I am gold. It's already a call yeah. option. Like you can yeah. move up a little bit. Like are you just trying to play like a bouncing gold? Is that the, like you could buy Philo, it's eighteen dollars, they raised hundred and twenty million at twenty five. Yeah, you're just trying you to play that you're playing to play, play, that, play right? the seasonal bounce, right? It's like yeah. where can you we always talk about long term investing, but we never talk about like short term short term trades. Short term trades. But there is always seasonality short term trades to be made. Yeah. And I think this one's an interesting one because gold's at what today? 20, 20, 2040. 2040. But it's, it seems like the sentiment is disbelief. So I, I guess the question, sure. the question you have to ask yourself is what does it take to bring people back? The number I keep seeing right now is 2100 is this magic hurdle, but is that true? But what a, what a perfect story. You have an oversold, before. you have an oversold November. Yeah. Yeah. You have an oversold November rolling into a bullish, like all time high gold price. Right. December where the, Poorest performing month ever is always November, and the best performing it's month ever December. is always December. And now you've got right at the inflection between those two things a strong gold price. And so, again, <laughs> not giving people royalty, investment. You buy options on a royalty company. There's an idea, mm -hmm. right? So you can buy it like that. Like Franco is off forty percent or whatever. Like you could buy like I'm sure the option book is pretty pretty deep for Franco, something like that. Like you go into something like that and just say, wow, like this is a tough industry too. So they're probably buying some pretty sweet royalties. Uh, yep. They probably are like gold prices. Yeah, up, so they, they're very happy. That'd probably be a good one. Look at the royalty companies. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, we re reiterate that we're not giving advice. You were just kind of, Shooting, no, but the name of, shooting, we're, shooting, shooting from the hip and having fun right explorer. now. I would never recommend buying options. It's crash labs. It's you know <laughs> making money, making money while the world burns. So that's exactly what's going on, <laughs> yeah, and that's what we're trying really to talk about right doing. Now. It doesn't mean that we're licensed professionals to yeah. give anybody investing advice. 
Yeah. We do what we do. We're uh, we're preppers. (laughs) Yeah. Well, some of us are. Yeah. But uh, doomsday preppers. Yeah. 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 But again, but to to where you started, it's a fun, it's kind of a, it sucks because people have lost a lot of money, right? So a lot of money has been destroyed. And it's like the 19th thing that has destroyed wealth in Canada. Right. It's like how many of these like absolute crashes can we go through and people keep coming back from the venture? Yeah. So I don't know. It's but almost like yeah, it's almost like you have to take the Christmas money and just YOLO it into something at this point to rebuild the rebuild the ammunition. Yeah, what a Fair world, enough. eh? It used to be like a responsible thing to do would be to save your money, save cash. And now it seems like that people don't do that because it's unattractive. Yep. They get crushed anyway. And so it's like you have to gamble. Mm-hmm. You have to gamble your money. To keep up with the Joneses. Yeah, exactly right. everything's, no, everything's exactly so right. expensive now, right? Yeah. Everything's just more expensive. Yeah. Like inflation coming down doesn't mean prices are coming down. It means that prices increase of pricing is slowing down. Yeah, it's still increasing. Like the, the acceleration is slowing down, right? So yeah. it's like it's not exactly like we're not going back to previous pricing. No. That ginger fireball that I like so fresh from the juice store, it's gonna be like thirty dollars. Oh, Jeez. Ginger fireball. So they used to call me in high, in high school. <laughs> My old girlfriend used to call me. The ginger fireball. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, okay. we'll leave it there. All right. <laughs> Everybody enjoy your week. We'll yeah. be back next week. Have All fun. Right. Bye. Take it Bye. Easy, guys. See ya.